Hi. Hi, sis. Welcome back, everybody. Hi. Welcome. Yeah, it's great to be here again. Let's, um, we're going to be looking at lesson four together. So again, Nook is, I think, reading from the FIP version. I'm looking at the COA, but as far as I can tell, they're identical. So sis, did you want to read this one? Sure. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity. Lesson number four from A Course in Miracles. These thoughts do not mean anything. They are like the things I see in this room, on this street, from this window, in this place. Unlike the preceding ones, these exercises do not begin with the idea for the day. In these practice periods, begin with noting the thoughts that are crossing your mind for about a minute. Then apply the idea to them. If you are already aware of unhappy thoughts, use them as subjects for the idea. Do not, however, select only the thoughts you think are bad. You will find if you train yourself to look at your thoughts that they represent such a mixture that in a sense, none of them can be called good or bad. This is why they do not mean anything. In selecting the subjects for the application of today's idea, the usual specificity, sorry, specificity, that's a big word, <laughs> is required. Be specific, right? Yes. Do not be afraid to use good thoughts as well as bad. None of them represents your real thoughts which are being covered up by them. That's a really big point. Phew. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you finish that paragraph and let's let's stop and talk let's about that. that. Yeah. So he's saying here that the good ones are but shadows of what lies beyond. And shadows make sight difficult. Mm. The bad ones are blocks to sight and make seeing impossible. You do not want either. And he means either good or bad, right? Right, right. Okay. Let's unpack this one before yeah. we go on. Yeah, definitely. Well, coming back to our first session together, we discussed that the only mind is God and God is good and God is love. So all true thoughts or ideas are from the mind of God. And they're like God. They extend and they express God, who is love. So this um, ego thought system that we seem to have made as a substitute mind, um, it mimics mind. But this mind is constantly, it's a chatter. It's the monkey mind that I've heard some people refer to it. And it's constantly sending thoughts across your awareness. And you know, while we're um, caught up in the world, we're not even realizing this. And this is the beauty of this practice of finding, he's even just asking for one minute of setting aside time to sit down and pay attention to those thoughts that are crossing your awareness without trying to control them. They're gonna come, don't worry. So just notice them, notice the quality, notice what they're saying. Um, you'll notice that they're gonna be a mixed bag. Some will be neutral, some that uh, we might characterize as a good thought or a bad thought. But what we wanna to come to see is that any thought arising from the ego thought system is not actually a true thought. Now, all thoughts, real thoughts from the mind of God are good. So those thoughts that seem to arise in an ego thought system that we would Volunteer, voluntarily characterize as good, there might be some truth in it, but it's certainly not the truth as God's knowing it. There's still some, uh, it's still obscured. There's still a hallucination there. And so that's why he says, even the ones that we call good are but shadows of what lies beyond. So it's a shadow of the true thought in the mind of God. The bad ones that we voluntarily would say, yes, I don't want that thought. 
that is a complete block. It shares absolutely nothing in common with those ideas that come from the mind of God. We're just, it's not a true thought. It doesn't have any meaning to it. Um, it's not a real thought. So those that we characterize as bad are a block. So he's asking us, this sentence is so telling, whether we call them good or bad, that third sentence in paragraph two, this is something to remember throughout our sessions together. None of them, good or bad thoughts, none of them are your real thoughts, which are being covered up by them. So the ego thought system, it's good and bad thoughts are covering up our true thoughts. And what are those? Those that we share with God. And those thoughts are pure and they're holy and they're given by God and they're the absolute truth. And they're happy and they're joyful. Yes. And they bring peace. Yes. And they bring union, communication, real communication, right? Mm -hmm. Can I add to that? <clears throat> you know, this is this lesson four, in a way, is the beginning of us learning um, to be the observer of our thoughts, mm -hmm. right? And then later on, we're going to learn to be the observer of our beliefs, mm -hmm. um, our past, and, you know, um, emotions of the body of everything we'll just be observing everything that comes through the mind through the ego thought system so this this really is so helpful in that what it, it's beginning to do is to make a positive separation between what the ego is thinking and believing in its in that part of the mind in the wrong mind um and who we are okay because up until this point and i remember this when i went through it you too right mm -hmm. sis yeah yeah is that any thought that went through my mind particularly if it was a trigger um or any emotion that went through my mind all of a sudden i would say i am that mm -hmm. in my mind right mm -hmm. so if sadness came up if anger came up I would confuse myself with the ego's thoughts. And right. then it really takes us down into that dark spiral, that rabbit hole. And yes. it's very, very difficult to get up and out of it. And, and can we look again at the, the gap diagram? Um, the ego thought system is this the split mind, the mind that's gone to sleep. And mm. it's looking inward at the illusory gap well, this is the world as we know it, and these are the bodies. And so uh, you can imagine that there's pluses. This thought system and mythical me has its preferences. There's good and bad. We've had a good day, bad day, good thoughts, bad thoughts, good body, bad body, right? But all of that still within this realm. And so he's saying that all your thoughts and all your experiences are still within this gap, anything that's arising from the split mind is still the same illusory. It's not until we have closed that gap with a brother and joined so that our mind is now healed and whole that we can have one true thought. Isn't that amazing? This is total insanity, nothing real going on. But here is where our mind becomes one with God. And now the communication with God is back online and he orders our thoughts. Mm -hmm. We're in communion with God. And so we're knowing the truth with God. Yes. Yeah, beautiful. Well said, thank you, sis. And I just saw something else yeah. while you were talking. And, and this is something I didn't understand back then either, is judgment. Mm. I, I always, I always I always believe that um, that my ability to judge situations and people was actually a positive thing to have, right? Mm -hmm. Judge between good and bad. So what you're saying there mm -hmm. is that all of that judgment of good or bad has mm -hmm. to be given over to Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's it. We're yeah. retraining our mind, yeah? That's right. 
And, and in the first part, you know, we were just talking about the first 50 workbook lessons and that's the undoing because let's face it, we all believe that this figure here is us. We really do believe that this is who we are. We believe our story, our birth date, our circumstances, and that our mind is this brain under the skull cap. And, you know, everything is just right here based on this figure, this character, right? So we need to start undoing. We need to start recognizing the source of this, this figure, which is the split mind and, and what's in that gap and, and why is it there? And then to start the undoing process of recognizing everything that's in that gap is to maintain that first, the first idol that, you know, we're separate and the body's proof of that separation. Yeah. So we're looking at our thoughts. <laughs> uh, do you want to keep reading sis yeah thank you mm. so we're up to paragraph three in lesson number four correct this is a major exercise and will be repeated from time to time in somewhat different form the aim here is to train you in the first first steps toward the goal of separating the meaningless from the meaningful. Mm. It is a first attempt in the long range purpose of learning to see the meaningless as outside you and the meaningful within. It is also the beginning of training your mind to recognize what is the same and what is different. Mm. In using your thoughts for application of the idea for today, Identify each thought by the central figure or event it contains. For example, this thought about my body or my partner or my job, whatever it might be, does not mean anything. So this thought about blank, you fill in the blank, does not mean anything. That's a doozy. <laughs> yes. Okay. And then next, it is like the things I see in this room, on this street, and so on. Right? So it's just beginning those first steps here in generalizing the lesson. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, because before we were looking around us and taking in objects, and now we're bringing, we're coming back a step and recognizing, okay, this is the thoughts that I'm having also are as meaningless as what my five physical senses are perceiving. And the other thing, yes, is, is and we'll come to this a bit more later, but the other thing is we're, we're so dependent upon the ego thought system for judging what we believe is valuable and what we believe is valueless. Yeah. Right. Well, through the ego thought system in our mind, we haven't got a clue. And that's the truth, right? So this is going to help us to separate that too and hand that over to Holy Spirit. Thank you. So let's go on to the next one. You can also use the idea for a particular thought that you recognize as harmful. Mm. Can we do that, sis? Like this thought about physical pain does not mean anything, right? This uh, thought this about COVID. COVID, right. This thought about COVID does not mean anything. This thought about, hmm, what would be another threat? This thought about my partner leaving me, that's a big one, does not mean anything. I mean, take it deep. The thought about aging does not mean well, that's anything. different that one that that oh, that, that, that one's different <laughs> that uh, really has some meaning to it <laughs> yeah. well i mean disease and aging etc really kind of dynamite in the ego's thought system aren't they well, yes if there is if there is a hierarchy of illusions if some of these things in the gap are you know have more value than others right it would uh be seemingly more difficult to say. It's easier to say 
that this thought that I have about today's cold temperatures um, does not mean anything. I can, I can, okay, I can agree with that one. But this thought about that I have about disease does not mean anything, right? Well, you know, if you're struggling, that might have a charge to it. That brings up doubt and distrust and um, yeah, <laughs> right? It, it raises some, some questions. Mm. Yes, but what I, we, mm -hmm, go ahead. Keep going. I just want to say here that, you know, it's gonna bring up all kinds of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And I think if we introduce this at an early stage, which is if we're triggered, can we take a deep breath, recognize that we're triggered and <clears throat> then decide with Holy Spirit not to judge that? Can we do that? Yes, yes. Can we, can we do that? Like refrain from judging ourselves for being triggered mm -hmm. and for judging ourselves for judging. There's right. the ego right there. You know? I think it comes back to Jesus's instructions to us that when you do this, it's not even that you have to believe it. It's your willingness to just use these, apply it, do just do the assignment, right? And just be open to allow that even our doubt, even those spikes where we get really, I'm not sure about that. That's okay. He knows that that's how we're going to react. Uh, from fear or distrust, but just do them anyway and allowing the Holy Spirit to, you know, heal our perception and heal our mind. Something that that really helped me with this whole belief of hierarchy of illusions was again this diagram. And you know, Jesus says that things that have the same purpose are the same. Everything that goes in this gap, as Nook and I previously discussed, all has the same purpose. No matter what you call it, it is to maintain the belief that you are a body and we are all consenting that if we are physical mortal bodies at the end of that body is death. So whether you call it a headache or a splinter or the inability to pay a bill or conflict with a partner or disease or aging, it does not matter. They're all in the gap and they're all to um, keep you asleep to and and at the thought that this is you and the end of that being is death so let's just give it all the same equal value and thank god in the forgiveness of it we can recognize that none of it is true it doesn't matter what we call it, it doesn't matter if, if we believe in a hierarchy it isn't true and we'll know that it's not true when we're willing to forgive and join with the brother and close that seeming gap. And, and, and that'll be manifest more as we go. But recognizing our good thoughts and our bad thoughts and those things that have a trigger for us and things that we're like, Meh, it's, you know, they really do carry all the same val value. Everything in the gap is valueless and only this is the valuable. What's real is valuable. Okay. Thank you, sis. And all of this will make a lot more sense mm -hmm. as we progress with these lessons. Yeah. So no need to try and get it all at once. Yeah. No, we'll I'll just keep, we're just going to keep setting it, putting it out, putting it out, putting it out, <laughs> and, and it, it'll, it'll land. The penny will drop, so to speak. Yeah. So just to continue on with lesson four here, paragraph three. So the aim here is to train you in the first steps toward the goal of separating. Oh, am I on the right? You've actually finished, but I think this is beautiful coming back to three because this is what we're talking about with this, the um, diagram. Okay. So the aim here is to train you in the first steps towards a goal of separating the meaningless from the meaningful. And like we also added there mm -hmm. from the, from the valueless. Yeah. Right, separating the valueless from the valuable, right? So it's what is the meaningful and what is the meaning? What is meaningless, right? He's teaching us that anything that we're seeing and even the thoughts that we're thinking are meaningless. Where are, is our, where are the five physical senses perception and where are those thoughts coming from? Here, the split mind, right? And the body, it's five physical senses. He's taking us right by the hand and saying, Anything that's going on here in this realm 
is meaningless because it's illusory. It's not happening with God. What is valuable, what is meaningful is what we're doing when we're in our correct mind, the healed mind, Christ mind. That's when we have Christ vision. That's when God is directing our thoughts. That's when we're at peace, right? This is the meaningful, that's the meaningless. And that's what he's showing us through these lessons. Just as you were speaking then, hmm. um, I, I, a, a beautiful thought came in, a true thought, okay? Um, trust that one. <laughs> trust that one, right? That came from Holy Spirit. Hmm. Um, yeah, which is that, you know, through the split mind, we are in mega control all the time, even when we're sleeping, you know. Uh, we're trying to control our lives, our body, our relationships, our finances, everything, right? Um, and all of that is unconscious, but we're trying to keep God out, believe it or not, mm. compartmentalizing our lives. But the big thing that this thought just uh, gave me was that while we're in the ego mind and we're, we're really believing that our thoughts and our emotions and everything are all meaningful, our values are meaningful, the past is meaningful. Um, what we're actually going to do is we're going to severely, and I mean severely, limit our scope in this life, like totally limit, like contract, like a, a mega contraction. Yes. You know, imagine just being totally contracted and putting yourself into this tight little ball, all hunched in the corner of a very dark room and living your entire life from birth to death in that uh, pose. Yeah. It sounds horrific, but that's what we're doing in the ego thought system. Or, that's, so. that's literally what we're doing yeah. as we are infinite. We are infinite beings of light. And yet we try to take what cannot be limited and reduce it into this tiny little speck and then call that me and then limit ourselves by what we think the body's capable of doing and only what physical sense uh, agrees that yes that's possible that's impossible walking on waves by locating impossible right uh yes how limited and how much effort it takes i always like that analogy of trying to hold a beach ball underwater it's so unnatural and you're holding it and you're struggling and it, it that's like the the effort that it takes to keep this ongoing lie that the Christ can be reduced to a mortal. Yep, yep, Exhausting. yep, yep. I really understand that now from this vantage point, right? Yeah. Oh boy. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I think that our, our natural state is, you know, union with God, that our thoughts are the unlimited, we know with God, God the all-knowing is our mind. Can you imagine? And now I'm trying to curtail and hold off all these thoughts of God so that Corrine could try as she might to have one independent uh, thought on her own. What a disaster. Mm, uh, yeah. You gotta laugh. Eventually we do laugh. <laughs> so I hear. I promise you. <laughs> so okay. let's get back here. Um, he does say here, um, it is also the beginning of training your mind to recognize what is the same and what is different. We did say that before, right? Yeah. So, so we've, we're doing, we've, we've got, sorry, I've repeated myself here. That was paragraph Let me three. Read, uh, read paragraph five. I don't think we. Okay, paragraph five. Mm -hmm. You can also use the idea, you know, this thought about whatever does not mean anything. It is like the things I see in this room, on the street and so on. You can also use the idea for a particular thought that you recognize as harmful. This practice is useful, but is, but is not a substitute for the more random procedures to be followed for the exercises. Do not, however, examine your mind for more than a minute or so. Mm. You are too inexperienced as yet to avoid a tendency to become pointlessly preoccupied. Wow. Mm. <laughs> he says it how it is, doesn't he? Yes. Mm. We're babies. Yeah. 
Further, since these exercises are the first of their kind, you may find the suspension of judgment in connection with thoughts particularly difficult. <clears throat> Do not repeat these exercises more than three or four times during the day. We will return to them later. Right. Very good. Okay. So just to take some presence, be in presence and just examine the thoughts that are crossing your mind and agreeing or affirming that these thoughts do not mean anything, just like our practice of that shoe, that table, that person, that hose, that dish does not mean anything, right? Okay, we'll extend this truth to our thoughts. These thoughts do not mean anything. They are like the things I see in this room or on the street from this window or in this place. Lesson number four. It's funny, just to conclude here, when I, when I first began the lessons, I remember feeling <laughs> uh, not just a sense of confusion, but sometimes a sense of terror mm. because I didn't have anything to compare my thoughts to. You know, I didn't have that contrast of knowing, really, really knowing the Holy Spirit or what we call the Holy Self. Um, and so <clears throat> here I, I really trusted my own thoughts, my own judgments, yeah, my own experiences, my own emotions to tell me that what was valuable and what was valueless, mm -hmm. or meaningful and meaningless. So these first few lessons, mm -hmm. um, for me, sent me into a bit of a tailspin, to be honest. All right. Now I can say that when I read these lessons, I get such a deep sense of peace to know that whenever there's an ego thought that comes in, mm -hmm. I know that's not me. Right. Yes. And, and we won't know that until we've had enough of that contrast learning where we allow our minds to be at peace so that the, the thoughts from God can register, we can actually hear the thoughts of God. And then when we compare them to the thoughts that the ego sends, the contracted ones, um, it becomes untenable. So there's a, a process, a very loving, as you can tell, Jesus is being so gentle, so easy that just you know resting in the practice that's all we need to do and trusting that there's a, a process that you're taking th taken through and a contrast of reality versus you know the ego arises and you will voluntarily make the choice for what's real as you experience the two so that's down the road but we just want to encourage you and bolster you and put our arms around you that all is as it should be and it's a happy ending <laughs> Things are good ahead. Yeah. Thanks, sis. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us on lesson number four, and we'll see you again soon. Very soon. Bye. Bye.